Hi, welcome to Android Programming using Basic for Android. In this video I'm just going to show you the basics of adding views onto an activity uh, using the designer and how you can actually interact with those views that you add. So we're starting with an empty project here and the first thing you do with any empty project is save it. So I'm going to go to save in my projects folder. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm just going to call it views. Open the folder and I'm just going to call my program views. So now I've got my program I can open the designer. When you've got the designer open it's also a good idea to open an Android emulator. So from the tools menu in basic for Android you would go to run AVD manager which is the Android virtual device manager. That will then open up this window where I've got a number of Android devices already configured and I've started up a win a Android 2.3.1 device which is running in this window here. So you can see I can use the device normally. I've got a number of applications on there. I'll just leave it on the home screen for now. So on my designer, if I open up my designer windows, there's an icon uh, that says status disconnected. If you double click the icon, that will connect to any Android device which is connected to your laptop or your PC and whether that's a virtual Android device like the emulator running here or you may have a phone or a tablet connected via USB. So that's now connected and you can see that the device, the emulator device is now switched to a blank screen because it's running the emulator, the um, designer. So on our designer we're just going to go to add a view and I'm just going to add in a button. So you'll see the button appear on the abstract designer and it will also appear on the device. On the device itself you can drag buttons around or you can drag them around on the abstract designer, it really doesn't matter. So if this was a real phone you could drag the button around with your finger and see it move around on the computer screen at the same time. So we're just going to move the button around, we're just going to scale it up at the bo bottom of the device's screen. Also another thing you can do is on your layout on your abstract designer set it to match connected device just so that it's exactly the same screen size as the phone or the emulator that you're using. Um, you would use different layouts or you'd use a designer script to support different phone screens but for now we're just going to work with one phone screen size and we'll look in a later, later video about different layout sizes. Um, but you could obviously experiment, I could go 7 inch tablet say. The problem is if I'm, des if I'm telling the designer that I'm designing for a 7 inch tablet you'll see that if I was to run the app on my phone, which is my emulator here, this button's not actually fully on the screen, so the app the app isn't going to work properly. So for now I'll just stick with connected to the um, emulator, and if you do change the screen size so it's smaller than the connected device, you get these red lines appearing. On that, if you just go resize form to fit layout, it will just scale it back down. So I'll leave the button at the bottom of the screen here, and I'm just going to give it a name, so I'm just going to call it my button. And that's also how you can re that's how you refer to it in your actual code of your program. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a tick box because we want to see views interacting with each other. So if I scroll down my list of views, one of them is checkbox or tick box or whatever you want to call it. So you'll see it appear as a checkbox on your emulator, how it'll actually look in the program. But in your abstract design, you just see a bounding box to show how big that control is, that, that view is, and what its actual object name is called. But what I'm going to do is, on the settings for it, I'm going to change the text. So it just says checkbox. And you'll see when I do that, it doesn't change it on the abstract designer because the name of the object is, st is still checkbox1. But on the actual program, it will say checkbox. It will say what the label is, the text. In our program, we're going to change the name of the object to my checkbox. So we've got my button, my checkbox. And also on the button, we'll put some text on there as well. So we'll select the button, and we'll just put, we'll just put button. It doesn't really matter, just so it's got something on it on the device. Now all, we want, all we're going to do is do it so that when you click the button, it will tick the checkbox. 
So to do this, we need to make your program aware of these objects, as well as the layout. So we'll save the layout. We'll just call it main for now. And then we need to generate what's called members in the code. So if you go tools, generate members on the designer. Firstly, we can declare the button and declare the checkbox in code because we're going to be referring to those objects. So if you're going to refer to an object, then you need to declare the object. And on the button, we're going to declare the click object because that's what we want to actually act on. So we hit generate members and then close this and go to our code. You'll see that under subglobals, it's dimensioned the two objects, the button and the checkbox. So it's already put them in, you don't have to type it in. And we've got a new sub function here called my button click. So we'll put the code in for my button click so that when when the user clicks on the button, it will access the checkbox and it'll go my checkbox. And then when you press the period, you'll get given all the objects, all the properties of that checkbox. So we're going to get a checked and you can see they're checked as, as a boolean. So we're just going to check through everything else on here to see if there's anything else we want to select. There's nothing, that's definitely the option. It's always good to check through the other properties just to make sure you're picking the right one. So we're going to say checked equals true. And all that's going to do then is just set that checkbox to true when we click on the button. Only other thing to do now before we run this is in the activity create, which is which is the first thing it will run when it starts the program, we're going to load this layout. So the command for that is activity and load layout. Give it the name of the layout. And then run the program. When you first go to run the program, it will ask you for the package name. And you do this in kind of a reverse order. So I'm going to call it com.eacoding.views. This is just a way that Google kind of identify your program or Android identifies your program among other packages on the application. Some applications can refer to other applications that are installed. Um, to use functions or methods like you have the barcode scanner which is used by several applications so other applications refer to the package name of the barcode scanner to actually access it so this is what your view would, what your program would be called to other programs on on Android so we'll click OK to that and we've got label which is what it will be called on the launcher on your phone or your tablet so we're just going to call it views click OK that will then compile it once it compiles it Basic for Android will automatically copy it across onto the connected Android device. Or if there isn't a physically connected Android device, it will compile it and run it on your emulator. So you can see there, it's finished, it's packaged it up. It's signing it, which is basically a key that gets assigned on, that gets tagged onto the program uh, to kind of make it a unique thing. It, it, it's, it can stop piracy and things like that. I'm not totally sure, to be honest with you, um, but I'll go into that at a later date once I actually find out what it is and do the homework for you. So you can see there, it's installed the device to, to the emulator device. So we'll close this, we'll go to our emulator, and you see, you'll see the emulator here is running the actual activity now. So I can check the tech checkbox and check it, or I can click the button. When I click the button, that will then tick the checkbox. Obviously ticking the button again doesn't do anything because the checkbox is already checked. So it's not going to make it false because the function is simply set to say when you click on the button, set it to true, which it already is. So it just stays true. So if I uncheck it, click the button, it'll make it true. Say we want it to do both. Say we want it to make it true or false depending on what it what it is. So what we'll say is, we'll say if my checkbox checked is true, then set it to false. So you'll see what it will do here. It will validate this um, based on the context of how you're accessing the function, the uh, method of the checkbox.
Right, so all we're saying here then is when you click on the button it's gonna say it's gonna say, okay, well if the checkbox is already checked, then make that false. Otherwise, make it true. And that's it. So if we then compile this program, we'll find the button will work more like a switch. So switching the checkbox on and off every time we click it. So that installs the device. I'll bring up the device. We'll wait for our basic for Android to finish just to ensure that it's completely done. Okay. So we check the checkbox, we can uncheck it, it's fine. We click the button, it checks it. Click the button again, it will uncheck it. So if I keep clicking the button, checks it on and off every time. So we've made some more of an interaction there. Next thing we're going to do is something um, a bit different. So we're going to make a, f a view. We'll make the checkbox become checked based on the value of a seek bar. So a seek bar being something you drag across like a volume bar or something like that. So in our designer then, we'll go to our thing and we're just going to add in a seek bar. Drag it out. Go to our generate members. And we're going to declare the seek bar as well as value changed. So that that is every time the user drags the seek bar in, um, at all, that function gets ran. So we'll generate the members for that. Save off our view, our layout. And we'll go to our value changed seek bar. So what we're going to say is when value change gets called, the value of the seek bar whether it's 0 or 100 or in between, depending where on the bar the notches, the notches um, will get given to this function. And we'll also get told whether the user changed it or whether something else changed it. So we're going to assume that the user changed it in this case because we have nothing else in our program affecting it. So we're going to say, okay, if the value is above 50, then my checkbox checked is true. Else my checkbox checked is false. I'm going to be good. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. It's not good to make it all one line really. You can for short things but I don't know I just like it a bit tidier. Okay so we'll run this now and you'll see some slightly different behavior or some new behavior rather on the program so it installs the device this takes a minute it's much quicker to install to the device if you've got a phone connected to your laptop or PC uh, that you're using instead of using an emulator also if you've got a if you've got a particular Intel system you can enable kind of hardware emulation for your Android emulator, which means that your Android emulator on the PC will run as fast, if not faster, than it does on, your, on a real phone. Um, it's worth looking up. It's called Intel VT, which is Virtualization Technology. Just Google Intel VT Android Emulator, and you'll find how to set that up. I can't demo it at the moment because, unfortunately, my laptop doesn't support this. Uh, I do have a second laptop that supports this at work, and I will demo that at some time in the future. Okay, so for now, if I drag this, this seek bar around the first section, you'll see the checkbox doesn't change. But if I drag it over halfway, checkbox becomes checked because I've dragged it over 50%. So you can see there, I'll just drag it around. Checkbox checks, unchecks, based on the function. So every time it drags it, it runs that seek bar one value changed function which is causing that to get checked so that's it that's uh, the basics of how you get views to interact with each other uh, just looking at the other views available if I go into the designer and go on to add views we've got a text box you can add in there with the option for the auto completion uh, functionality so when you type things into Google you see other choices coming up as you're typing that's an auto complete box buttons we've seen checkboxes we've seen 
edit text is simply a plain text box that you can that the user can type text into. Uh, image view is a box to let you show pictures in, and we can look at that in a very soon tutorial. Horizontal scroll view um, is a way of listing one or many items on top of each other in a list. So when you scroll down, say you scroll down a list of news articles on a web page on your phone, uh, that could also be done using a horizontal scroll view. Uh, labels are simply text labels. List view is a more basic um, view which just lets you list just text elements really. Uh, I use that in a program I wrote called Romance Reminder which is on the Android Play Store uh, just to list basic categories and data objects. Um, a panel is basically a box that enables you to add other views to it. So if I add a panel now, if it's going to show me, it will show me because I need to bring up the abstract designer. So you can see I've got a panel there. If I move my button, put my button on that panel, so change the parent of the button to the panel, and I'll do the same within my checkbox. So I'll move the checkbox onto the panel, make the parent of it the panel. When I move the panel, it also moves those views with it. So that's a very clean way of keeping views together, and then you can move them all around at once. So, you know, you may have a, a, a set of buttons on your view, on your program, and you just want them either one side of the screen or the other. So you can just move the whole thing at once without having to access individual views. That's quite useful. And we'll use them in more uh, future tutorials. We have a progress bar, which is just like a loading bar. A radio button, which I'll show you, is simply, if I go on to my designer, on my emulator. See, so a radio button is simply that. It's like a tick box, but you can have multiple radio buttons, that sort of thing. We also have scroll view, which again is just another way of scrolling through items. Uh, in fact, a scroll view is the vertical scroll view, more like a web page, sorry, not a horizontal scroll view, which is left and right. Seek bar we've used. A spinner is a drop down list of pre selected items, or pre written items that you can select from. Uh, tab host, we won't go into it at all at the moment, you need to add that in using uh, coding, you can't do that really with the designer, but that's a way of having multiple tabs, instead of having multiple screens, you can screens. You can have a list of tabs at the top of the screen, and then enabling you to access different screens, but without having to have different screens in your code, you can just have tabs. Um, sort of like on, a, on basic for Android here, we have tabs for files, logs, libraries, modules, that sort of thing. And then the only other views on here then uh toggle button, which is simply an on off button. So if I add it, you'll see it's literally an on off button that you can the user can switch on and off. And then we have web view, which is a window which enables you to display websites within your application. So you may want to use that on a help page, or you may want to use it as a shortcut to a website, or just simply write an app that is a shortcut to a website in itself, which just opens that site on your main app. And then you could have a few other functions around that web page, say. So that's it for views. Let me know what you think in the comments, and let me know what sort of things you'd like to see in future videos. Until then, I'll see you later.